In this next example, we have two forces acting on an object again. We have a 42.5 Newton force, which is vertical. It only has a Y component. And we have a 53.2 Newton force on a bearing of 155 degrees. Remember, bearings are measured from zero degrees at three o'clock on a clock face, and they're measured anti-clockwise. So we have 53.2 Newtons on a bearing of 155 degrees. Now the process is exactly the same. I'm going to begin by numbering the two forces, force one, force two, and then I'm going to find the X and Y components of those two forces. So first of all, we've got F1X. Now the X component of this force, if we turn this into a triangle, the X component is going to be the line at the bottom there. And the Y component of the 53.2 Newton force is going to be the second line on that triangle. But let's just note the directions. The X component goes right to left, so it's negative. The Y component goes bottom to top, so the Y component's positive. If we look at force 2, the 42.5 Newton force, we can see that it doesn't have an X component because it's vertical, but it does have a Y component, which is also positive. So F1X then, we need to find the length of this line here on the triangle. We know that that force, 53.2 Newtons, is on the bearing of 155 degrees. So the first thing we need to do is to determine the angle here inside the triangle. Well, angles on a straight line equal 180 degrees. So on that horizontal line, the angle is 180 degrees. Therefore, the angle inside that triangle is going to be 180 minus the bearing of 155, which is 25 degrees. We can label our triangle. We've got the hypotenuse. We've got the opposite, and we've got the adjacent, which is what we're trying to find. And remember from the previous video, adjacent is hypotenuse cos theta, and opposite is hypotenuse sine theta. So we want to find the adjacent. We know the hypotenuse is 53.2, so we're going to have 53.2 cos of the angle, which is 25 degrees. So F1x is 53.2 cos 25, which is... 48.22 newtons and F2x, the x component of the second force, is just going to be zero. It doesn't have an x component. F1y, the y component of the first force, is going to be the opposite on that triangle. The opposite is hypotenuse sine theta. So we've got 53.2 sine 25 which is 22.48 newtons. And F2y is just going to be F2 because it only has a y component, and that's going to be 42.5 newtons. Next, we need to double check our conventions for these forces. So we've already said that F1x is negative. The x component of force one is negative. So we need to input our negative there, and we can input it on the line above as well. We've also said that F1y and F2y are both positive. So once again, we can put our positives in alongside them. It's really important that we do this check of our conventions, because when we come to add these forces, that's going to have an impact on the x and y components of the resultant. So, the resultant force, FR, has an x component, and it has a y component. And the way that we find the x component is by adding the other x components together. So we've got f1x minus 48.22. And f2x is just 0. Therefore, frx is going to be a negative 48.22 newtons. We then find the y component of the resultant by adding the y components together. So we've got plus 22.48. And to that, we're adding 42.5. And that gives us a Y component for the resultant of 64.98. So 
So our next step is to construct the triangle for the resultant using those values, a positive y component of 64.98 newtons and a negative x component of 48.22. So let's draw this out. We've got negative 48.22. Because it's negative, that force goes from right to left. And the y component is positive, 64.98 is positive, so it goes upwards, 64.98. And the resultant joins the start to the end. That's what we're trying to find, that resultant R. And we're also going to try to find the bearing, which is that angle theta there. Now the way that we'll need to do this is we'll need to find the angle inside the triangle, thigh, and then we can determine theta from there. So first of all, we need to find the magnitude of the resultant. And remember it's the square root of the 48.22 squared plus the 64.98 squared. The square of the two shorter sides gives the square of the longer side. 64.98 squared plus 48.22 squared, and again remember to square root that. The magnitude of the resultant is 80.92 newtons. And our angle is found by doing tan to the minus one opposite over adjacent. And as we said before, opposite is opposite the angle, and adjacent is the other shorter side. So just remember, we're finding thigh here, not theta. Thigh equals tan to the minus 1, opposite 64.98, over adjacent 48.22, giving us an angle thigh equal to 53.42 degrees. And if thigh, this angle inside the triangle, is 53.42 degrees, then theta is just going to be 180 minus that. So we can say theta equals 180 minus 53.42, which is 126.58 degrees. So all that's left is to write our summary line, and our summary line states that the resultant equals 80.92 newtons at a bearing of 126.58 degrees. So that is the evaluation of the resultant force.